so many designers are asking themselves, should I use Webflow? Should I learn Framer? But there's a designer, Alicia, who is using both tools and use them to build an amazing agency. And today I want to talk to her to understand why she uses both tools, which one is good for which project. And she's actually going to take us through some actual projects, client projects, and explain why she used each tool for the job. It's going to be super interesting. Let's do it. So many people are wondering which tool should I use, Webflow or Framer, and thinking that they have to come up with one answer. And that's why I'm super, super excited to have a conversation today with Alicia, who is an amazing designer and the founder of Code and Wonder Agency. And she uses both tools, actually a lot of tools, just to build a very cool agency. So I want to hear your perspective about how you work with these tools. What are the pros and cons? How do you decide? What do you use for each project? And just, just in general to hear how you're thinking about web design tools. What's up, Alicia? Welcome. <laughs> Hi, thank you. Thank you for having me. It's so great to be here. Yes, I do use both. So a little bit of background. Uh, I'm co-founder of Code & Wonder, a digital agency, like you said. And we initially started with full-on development, so mainly React development, a bit of WordPress and so forth. And then we discovered all these new tools. Uh, so initially we started with Webflow just because it came before the new Framer sites. So I have more experience with Webflow than Framer. But Asuna Framer came out with their site building tool, because uh, before they were a prototyping tool, we jumped in and tried it out. And they've been developing so many new features super quick. It's yeah, a really proactive team, I have to say. So yeah, pros and cons with both. I wouldn't say there's no, first of all, I would love to hear before we're diving into the pros and cons, you're already working with Webflow. So what was your trigger for, okay, here's another tool. What made you be interested about Framer and considering, although you're already proficient working with Webflow, why would you learn another tool? I think I just learned trying new things <laughs> and just giving more option to you know our clients. Yeah, it's nice to try new things and see how other people build maybe the, the same website, but take different perspective on how you can build that. Um, learning the different features because they they are slightly different and I think they do take a slightly different perspective and how they approach web design or like web building. So yeah, I'm also curious, always curious to learn new tools and stuff. Fantastic. So what have you found out? What What's working for you with each of them? So it's a bit of a mind shift. So because I come from more like an HTML and CSS background, so I learned HTML and CSS before jumping into Webflow, that became like Webflow was very natural to me because you kind of have the two sides and on the left, you have all your HTML and on the right, you have all your CSS. So it made complete sense to me. It just clicked while Framer ha is built on React. So it's a bit of a mind shift of how everything is set up on Webflow. You're kind of relying on classes. Uh, so you start everything based on the classes. So when you jump in, it might be a little bit more of a learning curve if you don't have that like develop developer background where you have to learn, okay, what is a class? What are these CSS properties? How do you style this? What the hell is relative, like position relative and absolute? Like what is all this stuff? Because the naming convention of Webflow is all very, it, it's mirroring the development side. Yeah. Well, sure. Framer takes a different approach where I compare a little bit more to Figma, where you have frames and you have groups and you have kind of the auto layout that they call stacks and rows, and you can, you know, position images and elements anywhere in a frame without having to worry too much about, you know, the web grid or like the, the blocks layout that Webflow has. So jumping into Framer without a development background might be a little bit easier because um, you can just mess around and try new things. Now that you know both of them, how do you decide what tool to use for each project? What are like the best use cases? I would also love for you to show us a few projects that you worked on and, and kind of break down why you chose each tool for which. Uh, yeah, we can definitely jump into those. But just to answer your question, which one? It's mainly down, for me at least, it's mainly down to the CMS uh, functionalities that the site needs and based on the design. So I think where Framer is 
lagging behind slightly uh, compared to Webflow is the CMS functionality and specifically the option to have like different CMS connecting to each other or different collections connecting to each other. So in Webflow, you have the multi-reference field where you can reference another collection compared to the ones that you're building now. While Framer, you can still have multiple collections, but they don't link. There's no link between those collections. So the complexity of the CMS will dictate which platform would you use? Um, so there, there's three elements to okay. it. One, one is the CMS. Uh, the second one is how modular the site is because Framer relies a lot of components. If the design of the site has lots of pages, but they're kind of reusing the same components of, or the same layouts, Framer could be a good option for that because it's kind of building with those components in mind. But if you have lots of different pages, I find my personal opinion <laughs> is that I find more useful to have reusable classes that I can, you know, style those elements across the site. And it's kind of reusing the class if it's not possible, if it's not the right approach to change it into a component. So just to clarify for people, because Webflow also has components, right? So both platforms has components, but in Framer, they work differently, right? It's a component that might have a few different states. You might create, you know, uh, variations on it, or it's more configurable, I guess, than the components on uh, Webflow, which are pretty static, and then you can just replace the text maybe, but yeah, okay. So reusability of components would be a, a reason to use Framer. That's interesting. Okay. And the third one, it depends on the client. So I have some clients that have developers in-house, so they approach us and say, oh, we want all of this set up. And then our team has some development background. So it's easy for them to change and they understand, you know, like classes and HTML and CSS. And then I have other clients where they're like, oh no, we only have developers in-house. So it's a lot easier for them to understand Framer because they come from a Figma background and therefore it's easier for them to maintain. Uh, so that plays another role into the making the decision between the two. Got it. Okay. So I, so I understand it's not really, it's like three factors and depending on them, you have to come up with the right answer. If it's like, if the client has preferences, obviously that matters, but if the client doesn't have preferences, it's either, if it's a very complex CMS might be better for a uh, web but if it's high on you know, components and modularity that might be a better fit for Framer. Do you have one of these tools which you find faster to develop on? It Again, it depends on the design. So what I really like about Framer is that it has kind of built-in animations or built-in functionality that you can just create with one or two clicks. One example that I'm going to show you later is you can kind of drag and drop elements as if they were folders on your desktop with just like two clicks. And it's a pre-made animation within Framer. While in Webflow, you would have to code that yourself. So it is possible in both, but it will take a lot longer in Webflow than it is in Framer. Got it. Okay. So how about you show us the two examples and then we can dissect them or try to figure out why you chose them. Yeah, sure. So this is a project with that we did with the browser company for their launch of the Arcus and Windows campaign. This is built in Framer. And these are kind of the elements that I was mentioning before, where you can kind of drag and drop them as if they were, you know, folders on your Windows desktop in this case. Um, and this was super easy to create in Framer, uh, while it might have been more complex to build in Webflow. In this case, it's a very simple landing page, so nothing too complex. The bits which I think were easier in this case in Framer versus Webflow is, like I said, these icons and also the animation of the, of the tabs. So you have kind of the white background shifting from one to the other. Because this is made with a component. This is made yeah. with a component. So e these three are three variables of that component and you're just shifting the background from one side to the other. Yes, it would be more complex to recreate this in Webflow. Exactly, yeah, you would need custom code and all of that to, to recreate this. So 
there are a few things that, and I think most of them are based on animations, uh, that framer might be stronger, like out of the box animation compared to Webflow. But if you're looking at maybe a more complex site, I've got here ISO, which is one of our long-term clients, and this is built on Webflow instead. So they have like hundreds of pages and they have the blog with multiple filters and they have all of these filters are populated by a CMS item so they can add more collections, more filtering um, categories for their blogs and it will automatically all link and populate these drop downs, which you can't really do as it stands in Framer. But are you using something like a FinSuite CMS sort or something like this here? Yes, I am. Got it. So this is in, in general, this is kind of an extensibility, like an extension of Webflow. It's not natively possible with uh, Webflow, but it's an, uh, like a popular extension. Correct. Yes. Sorry. I should have clarified that. <laughs> no, no. Because I, I wonder if there's also maybe extensions possible with Framer or I'm, I'm, I might not be familiar with them, but I'm just wondering. I'm not entirely sure, to be honest with you. Uh, there's mm. when I searched for it, there was nothing that came up. So it would have to be built within React uh, to create this. The one thing which is slightly different is, for example, Webflow does have an open API that you can apply to and you can use, uh, while Framer doesn't have an open API just yet. So things like JetBoost, for example, or apps that utilize the API side off the platform, it's, as it stands, it's not quite possible in Framer. The FinSuite one works with attributes, uh, so adding attributes to it. The Framer is not quite built. So to is the main it. thing is the main thing for this website, which for example would be a limitation in uh, Framer, would be the how you're using a lot of different collections to link the blogs with categories, with sorting. The, the complexity of the CMS structure is what would make this website not a good fit for frame, for Framer. Other than that, the fact that there's a lot of pages doesn't really matter, or does it? Mm, no, not necessarily, because Framer can handle a lot of pages. It can handle folders, so, you know, nested slugs. Uh, it can do all of that. So you could build it in Framer. Uh, I think at the time, because this site is a few years old now, it like Framer didn't even have pagination for their CMS. So there were a lot of things that were lacking at the time and therefore it wasn't really a good fit for them to build in Framer. Got it. Very, very interesting. Do you see when it comes to, I wanted to ask about clients, but is there anything else you'd like to show us in the with these projects uh, that would explain why you chose each one? We've seen the animations uh, or the the interactivity of the dragging folders and the complexity of the CMS structure. Anything else you'd like to show us? These are the main, the main ones for me in terms okay. of complexity. Okay, fantastic. All right. So when it comes to clients, do you feel like there's a preference? Is it like more people know about Webflow? Is it 50-50? Do all clients even care about a platform or a lot of them are like agnostic? whatever you want. It's uh, it's funny that because uh, we've been running for about seven years. And when we first started, most of our clients didn't care what platform we built their site in. As long as it worked, they were like, yeah, you decide, uh, whatever. And now we're finding that more and more clients have already a preference of which platform. So most of the clients come to us asking either Webflow specific or Framer specific, and then we'll always have a conversation with them, checking what the features of the site actually are and confirm whether that's a good fit or not. But uh, usually, surprisingly, they already come with some sort of idea or they did some sort of research themselves. Maybe the ones that kind of have no clue and like, oh, I don't know. <laughs> I don't even know what the options are out there. Their first instinct is probably still going with WordPress because that's what they know. That's what their site was built on previously. Uh, it still powers what, like 40% of the web. So it's kind of like the IBM of, of the web being like, oh, can't go wrong if it powers 40% of it. But we don't really focus on WordPress anymore. So on our website, we 
never kind of advertise WordPress sites. So maybe is that we're attracting the clients that are more open to new suggestions and they're maybe like a newer company, maybe companies that are more open to new technologies and therefore they did the research themselves and then they come to us. Yeah, most of the time comes from them. <laughs> so how do you see the, the future of these tools? Do you see your agency keeps on using whatever tool is best and just adding more tools to uh, do you think one of them is going to take over the market or something like this and you'll end up doing everything with a single tool? How do you look at the future of web design? I know it's kind of a broad question. It's hard to tell. Um, I see it more like there's space for everyone. Like you have different car makes. Is one make taking over the other? Well, it depends on your what you need. Do you need a sports car? Do you need a family car? So I see it similar in the web development. And now we're talking about Webflow and Framer, but there's some small web builders that are growing and they're coming up. So I, I imagine there's going to be more and more of these popping out that I'm curious to try. Yeah, we'll see. I, I feel like each one might go towards a different goal. And therefore, you know, we might expand on the tools that we use and say, oh, like you're doing e-commerce. So this is the best solution. Or you're doing a landing page. Oh, therefore, that's the best solution. And it yeah, also will find its niche and, and sweet spot of, of a use case. Exactly. Yeah, I think so. We'll see. Interesting. Interesting. What would you say, you know, for designers who are looking to create like a fancy creative portfolio, what would you recommend them? Oh, um, I think both of them are good. I'm going to check it out. <laughs> 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 does um, everybody on uh, does everybody on your team like can handle both tools or is there like the webflow people versus the framer people oh a little bit there's a bit of that <laughs> divide <laughs> So I, I use both. My co-founder, I think he's, he's a React developer as well. So he probably leans a bit more towards Framer because of his background and he can just like build components as they want. I don't know React. So when I build in Framer, every time I need to build something, a component from scratch, I need help <laughs> uh, to do so. So I'm more maybe towards Webflow. But I think it depends on your background and what your preference is and how you build and yeah find the sweet spot i think for for portfolios and for designers if you're planning to use a lot of the pre-build animation that framer has those are super powerful um i've noticed that they added some new one of like their creative tools and you can add there's um, now very cool page transitions which yes. we're still lacking in webflow yes and uh you know you can arch the text and you can you know do all those pre-made uh animations yeah, elements in there but if you are moving away from those and it's like oh those are cool but actually i want to tweak it a bit more and i want to make it different and you don't know react I mean, you still have ChatGP to help you out, but um, it might be a little harder to create those custom components. Fantastic, Alicia. Thank you so much for, for helping to, to clarify the difference and the best use cases. Make sure everybody to follow her on Twitter, on YouTube. Uh, you're making awesome content and I love reading and watching your content. So thank you so much for coming on our channel and sharing some of your thoughts. Thank you so much for having me. Talk soon. Bye-bye.